The bow, as in the end of the rainbow, is a symbol that showcases unity. We've designed an ad-driven streaming service with community-based media functions that will revolutionize queer living and create connection on a global scale. The Bow is a platform where allied corporate sponsors will have the opportunity to join forces and celebrate true excellence in Canadian queer film and television. Here's where it all started. It was on Monday nights at 10 p.m. I had my remote programmed to flip back to CSI Miami just in case my parents came down the stairs. Why the lie? Because truthfully, I was watching Queer's Folk. When I saw Queer's Folk, I saw a version of myself in the future, living out an authentic life, my queer life. I'm 35 now, and if there's anything I could have given my younger self, it would be the reassurance that he'd be able to do just that. For the past 15 years, Bulldog Productions has been creating and cultivating real change in how we can support the queer community today. Roll camera. Here is an unfortunate stat. In 2018, JAMA Pediatrics, a renowned peer-reviewed journal published by the American Medical Association, concluded that queer youth were 3.5 times more likely to attempt suicide compared to their heterosexual peers. Navigating adolescence is hard enough, but without the support of your loved ones, growing up queer is often an isolating experience. So instead of being able to find our community, we spend our youth trying to just blend in so we can be accepted, valued, or just loved. In today's world, queer content is still seen as niche and in some circles inappropriate. I wish I knew how to quit. Queer youth exist and will always exist. This we know. I'm gay. However, all inclusive queer content is currently hidden behind paywalls, leaving it completely inaccessible to those who need it most. The Bow's mission is to serve the queer audience at large with a primary focus on youth. We believe if you see yourself represented on screen, you feel respected off screen. The Bow is a platform where audiences will gather to watch queer stories by queer creators. In order to do that though, we're gonna have to pull out some receipts. Performative activism won't cut it anymore. The modern consumer is well informed and the current social climate is calling for big brands to show true allyship in constructive and meaningful ways. So it's part of a larger pattern uh, from elected officials who espouse freedom uh, and liberty, but apparently think that freedom of speech only extends to people who agree with them. We've been telling stories since the beginning of time. Drag has been a part of that. It was part of Shakespeare and there's never not been drag. You can't have it both ways. You can't haul us out for Pride Month and then turn around and shove us you know, to the back and say, never mind, like, rainbow washing, we hope at least if you do it, you follow through. That no matter your sexual orientation, your gender identity, or your gender expression, you belong here. You have a voice here. You are respected and heard, and your existence isn't up for debate, not now, not ever. So not only would you be doing the right thing from a social standpoint, but it's also the right move financially. Across the world, queer people are desperate to see themselves in the spotlight. By securing this demographic, we'd be creating revenue streams lasting far into the future. And it's not only queer people who enjoy inclusive content. The main demographic for shows like Queer Eye is straight women. That's 45% of the population right there. While the general audience is becoming more accepting, a lot of the queer stories out there today aren't serving their intended communities. Let's illustrate it this way. In the 1960s, Motown and Stax Records were two competing labels which both represented black performers. It was important for Motown to appeal to a middle-class sensibility, so artists were dressed in formal attire and their sounds were polished with orchestral backing. Whereas Stax placed no restrictions on their performers which naturally lent itself to an ecstatic, rhythmically driven sound. While Motown's success contributed to the racial integration of popular music, their audience was 70% white. Stax music spoke to the black audience in a way Motown's could not by allowing artists the freedom of authentic expression. Similarly, queer stories are often put into a heteronormative box to be made palatable for a straight audience. While this kind of content has helped normalize the queer experience to a larger audience, we aim to highlight unedited queer stories that feel authentic to us. We can compare our ambitions to that of Bob Johnson, the founder of Black Entertainment Television. In 1980, Johnson launched BET as a way to fill a void in mainstream media by creating a platform to represent the Black community. 
Just 20 years after its creation, BET was valued at $3 billion and is now streamed in over 75% of households across America. Let's lay it out this way. If there's ever a time to jump in on this, it's now. Currently, 4.3% of the Canadian population is composed of black people, attributing to BET's success in the cold north. While the percentage of queer identifying individuals in Canada is reported at 11.1%, this means that the queer audience is about 2.5 times larger than BET's intended audience. Did you know a handful of executives control over 90% of the media we consume today? And to be honest, the reason we don't see ourselves represented on screen is because we don't see ourselves represented in those positions of power. By going through the private sector, we're writing our own narrative and giving queer voices a true seat at the table. Queer liberation is a universal movement impacting all segments of our society across social, racial, cultural, and socioeconomic boundaries. Supporting this cause holds the potential to become a unifier in today's diverse social climate. We're really excited to offer our seed investors a dedicated advertising space year-round on the Bow platform. This includes pre-roll and mid-roll ads, credited titles within all our productions, and 5% of every original production. Big brands spend upwards of $10 million to showcase their support during Pride. That's just one weekend a year. Why not highlight your support in a way that will enact real change, create jobs, and make your support known 365 days a year? We're tired of seeing Canadian spin-offs and watered-down content to please the masses. And we're here to change that with our first six original productions. They will act as the foundation for The Bow. Take it away, queens. Diners, drive-ins and dives meets RuPaul's Drag Race. In Drag Me to Brunch, our two co-hosts will visit both Hotspot and Hidden Gem drag brunch restaurants across the country. Our queens will judge both the food and the performers. Each episode will end in a performance showcasing the restaurant's resident queens. And while Drag Me to Brunch is not a competition show, it will give local talent a platform to shine on. And that's Drag Me to Brunch. It's time we honor the beautiful idiosyncrasies of real queer love stories in On This Day. Each episode will follow a queer couple on their journey to the altar, documenting the many ways and possibilities a wedding can be held. Our team of talented vendors will highlight the unique love each couple shares while putting modern twists on traditional wedding classics. We want On This Day to be an opportunity to celebrate all the forms of authentic queer love. In the world of Animal Place, animals are portrayed like people, which means they're gonna have people-like problems too. So while animals live and roam freely, they remain segregated in their lives and career choices. For example, pigeons go to pigeon school only to learn how to deliver mail. However, when every animal receives a letter from the government that mandates interspecies schooling, they are forced to coexist like never before. Our ensemble cast will navigate high school, questioning everything from race, religion, socioeconomic status, gender, sexuality, to body image. It's all on the table, and we'll tackle these topics with comedy and lessons learned along the way. Each episode will feature an original infectious pop track showcasing the struggle and triumph of each animal. You'll want to shake your tail feather to these tracks and cheer on each of these lovable characters. This is a proof of concept dramedy that we released just before the pandemic on Amazon Prime and Out TV. Fak Yas, named after the tasty Greek dish, follows Nico Nikolakis, a gay Greek Gen Z who is forced to travel back to his small town and live with his family that kicked him out years ago for being gay. This show presents current queer culture meets old world views, and we'll make you laugh and cry. But most importantly, this is a story about family love that will embrace the difficult discussions you'll have with the ones that you love the most. Now, with increased funding and a fresh script, we'll have the foundation to give you an elevated serving of fuck yes. Well, you've heard of voguing, but do you know where it came from? I can tell you it's definitely not Madonna, mm-hmm. 
Ballroom culture started in New York City in the 1960s and was a place for queer and trans people of color to walk their categories for grand prizes and trophies. Balls to the Wall will be a documentary series showcasing the larger-than-life personalities of the Toronto underground ballroom culture. We'll get to know these folks, and afterward, we'll dive into their personal lives, whether they're packing groceries or winning cases as a corporate lawyer. After decades of being hidden from the mainstream light, it's time for this world to be revealed and given the spotlight it deserves. It's 1996 and a young gay teen, Joe Bowen, gets into a fight with his brother and is left for dead in the murky waters of a nearby lake in northern BC. Two weeks later, Joe miraculously returns without a scratch and no recollection of what happened to him. Gradually, over the next few weeks, Joe develops unexplained powers, while also experiencing vivid dreams of a merman creature that brought him back to life in an underwater cave. When his dreamlike enigma suddenly arrives at his door, Joe learns that the tragic uprooting of his ancestral past might have a connection. The Bow is similar to current streaming platforms, but what sets us apart is offering a user experience unlike anything you've ever seen. Different sections of the platform will promote safe community interactions and learning. For example, in the Water Cooler, our professionally moderated discussion forum, users will have the opportunity to discuss meaningful takeaways from episodes of our shows. In Animal Place, we discover that Ruby is gender non-binary. Not sure what that means? Discuss it in the Water Cooler, where you'll find queer people who have lived experiences and know all about what it means to be outside the gender binary. We believe the only cure for homophobia is education, so other sections of the platform will have resources such as FAQs for newcomers, parenting tips, mental health resources, and more. So how do we have the confidence to do this? Because we've done it before. We've delivered on campaigns for Nike, CoverGirl, and Samsung, just to name a few, as well as produced scripted content for national broadcasting and streaming services such as Amazon Prime and OutTV Go. We've worked with the bigs, stood alongside the bigs, and we're now aiming higher. We've supported the queer community through projects such as the TD Forever Proud campaign and community initiatives including Rainbow Railroad, Pride Toronto, EGAL Canada, the Movember Foundation, and the Public Health Agency of Canada. We've walked the walk and we're ready to do it again. What if queer youth grew up never having to unlearn all of the biases instilled against them from the previous generation? It often takes years to break free from these harmful notions, leaving queer youth at a relative disadvantage. It is our mission to create equity within mainstream media so that no matter who you are, how you identify, you know that there's a community here for you to support you whenever you need it. This is what can be made possible when big name brands work together to create positive change. Can you see it? Can you feel it? This is the book. Delicious. Have you seen Mysterious Fan yet? Oh yeah, yeah. What did you think of the part? Oh no, no, no spoilers. 